Good morning. Guess the party's up here, huh? Hello everybody, how are you all doing? So today is Wednesday, as you can tell it's very cloudy outside today. I'm going off for a hike. I'm going to a place I've been to before, at least the area, it's called Fremont Open Space Preserve I believe. Now, I haven't been on this uh, particular hike, but it's very close to my house. I think it's around 15 minutes. And since my teacher's been here visiting us, I didn't want to be away too long. <laughs> I just have one quick announcement. Most of you already know this, but for those who don't, I want to let you know now that we're having a free online workshop on the 10 Oxfording Pictures. That's going to be Saturday, June 3rd at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Now, I just opened up the registration yesterday and already 26 people have signed up. Usually on my workshops, I kind of cap it off at 30. The reason for that is we meet on Zoom and I want it to be kind of an intimate experience, so I didn't want it to be too large. But we already have 26 people signed up, so I'm thinking of going to 50. 50 people cap. Because also, um, people who register, not everybody shows up. So I think I'm going to cap it at 50. So I'm letting you know now, if you want to join this free workshop, uh, I'm going to put a link down below to the registration. So go ahead and sign up for that. If you're not able to go to the workshop, or perhaps the registration fills up, I will have the recording in the Patreon community. So if you are supporting on the Patreon community, you'll have free access to the recording of that event. Again, the workshop's free for everyone, uh, but the recording will be for the Patreons. The reason why I have Patreon is to help support my project, to help support this YouTube channel. Uh, there's a lot of time and energy and also money <laughs> that goes into this project. So if you want to help support so we can continue this, you can join Patreon. That link is also down below. It looks very beautiful out. I'm heading towards the hills right now. Maybe I'll give you a quick view. I guess this is it. It looks like I'm in a residential area here. Um, far as I know, this goes to one of the peaks on the hills. So as always, we're gonna find out. Okay, looks like this is it. Looks like there's only one trail there. Looks like it goes in a loop, so let's check it out. I feel like I'm in somebody's backyard. <laughs> this could be interesting.
get a little bit of nature, a little bit of suburban life. <laughs> so nature, suburban life, same or different. The sky is gray, trees are green, the house is gold. I think we're getting close to the peak here. It's called Knob Hill, I believe. Seems like it's a uh, popular destination for people who live around here. I feel a few raindrops on me. Wasn't supposed to have uh, any chance of rain today, but uh, as in life. I think we're getting close. I don't know if it's if I'm out of shape or maybe I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> uh, I kind of feel like this hike is kicking me in the ass. I think we're almost at the top here. I guess that's the top. Knob Hill. I guess that's the peak up there. Sounds like there's a party up there. Let's go check it out. Good morning. Guess the party's up here, huh? <laughs> Amy. No, you sure? I'll take a picture. Ready? One, two, three, cheese. Cheese! Oh, thank you. That's a good one right there. All right, one, two, three. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Butterflies. Well, our friends just left. That was about an hour, hour and a half walk. 
you never know what you're going to get at the top of the peak. It's always very interesting. Well, that hike was quite surprising. I actually enjoyed it. <laughs> a couple things I want to talk about. Uh, yesterday, I was having a conversation with somebody and the topic of desire came up. Now, when you hear this word desire, what do you think of? I know for myself and talking to a lot of people, some kind of like negative feeling or negative thoughts come up when we hear this word desire. Some of us may have been raised in certain religious traditions where, you know, desire leads to punishment. Now in Buddhism, there's a different relationship to desire or a different way of talking about it. You might hear in Buddhist teaching about the five desires. That's desire for money, sex, food, sleep, and fame. These five desires are not good or bad. We teach that if you attach to these five desires, you will create suffering for yourself and others. But what does attachment mean? Attachment means putting our energy, all of our energy, all of our thinking and feeling into these five desires. But if we don't attach to these five desires, then how do we use them to help our lives and to help this world? There's a story about a Zen monk who lived in China a long time ago. And this monk lived in a small village which had a small temple. And the community loved this monk. He was always helping the temple. He was always doing ceremonies for people. Always giving to the community. But there came a period where people started to notice that this monk was starting to be a little bit greedy. <laughs> he would... Uh, cut in front of the other monks to receive uh, donations. He started to sell things for a lot of money. He was always asking people for money when he gave teaching. 
before he would give teaching, he would ask for money. <laughs> and one of the monks noticed that he didn't spend all of this money. He kept all of this money in his closet. So he was known as the greedy monk, and a lot of people did not like his actions. When the winter came, there was a very large storm that appeared, and it damaged a lot of the village, the farms and barns, it damaged the temple, and the community was devastated. A couple days after the storm, some of the village people noticed something very unusual. One group of people came into the village with lumber and started repairing the town. Another group of people went to the temple, donating food and materials to rebuild the temple. Another group of people went to the farms and were planting seeds into the ground. One person found out that this greedy monk took all of this money that he was keeping in his closet and used it to help rebuild the village. So when the townspeople heard about this, <laughs> they felt very shamed and very bad for checking him and judging him. When it came time to visit with this monk, this monk said, you know, I understand the way you felt and the way you acted towards me, but I perceive something some time ago that this village would be struck by this storm and cause this devastation. So I decided to get all the money I could to help. I think that's a interesting story about desire and our relationship to desire. So again, desire is not good or bad, but how do we relate to it? So earlier I mentioned attachment to desire clouds our mind and our lives are not clear. So we can't live clearly from moment to moment. In my book, I talk about living life without attachment. So if attachment means putting all of our energy, all of our feelings, our thinking into something, living life without attachment means putting all of our energy, that means our thinking, our feelings, into this moment, becoming intimate with this moment becoming intimate to those who are in front of us. And this is where our minds become clear. This is where we find love and compassion. If you studied Buddhism or Zen, you might have ran into the six senses. That's the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, mind. All human beings have this and they're not a problem. The problem is the six dusts. Everybody has dusts covering their eyes dust covering their ears, their nose, tongue, body, or mind. We just want to see what we want to see. We want to hear what we want to hear. These dusts is like a filter. The truth is filtered through these dusts, so we can't see the truth of this moment. By putting all of our energy into this moment, these six senses become clear. Everything becomes clear, and everything becomes a tool. The eyes become a tool. The ears become a tool. Our mouth becomes a tool. The desires becomes a tool. Thinking becomes a tool. Emotions become a tool. In fact, when the six dusts dissipate and this moment is clear, then they're not even five desires. They're just, how can I help? Some of you know that I started streaming for the Empty Gate Zen Center way back in 2009. And that's when I got into technology. In fact, I love technology. <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with it. But at that time, I started to love computers and cameras and phones. And I was wondering, or maybe looking at that very closely, my, my love for these gadgets, I started to think as, well, what purpose does it serve? Is there a way I can use these things to do something helpful? And as many of you know, I found a way to use these things to help people in their practice. What I think is important 
is when desire or thoughts or feelings appear, is just look at it clearly. Can we use it right now in this moment? If we can't use it, we just let it go. Let's say you're building a table and you have a hammer and you use your hammer to build the table. You put the hammer down when you're finished. Now it's time to cook dinner. So dinner time, what do you do? Maybe you're thinking about the hammer, but can you use the hammer to cook dinner in the moment? No. So you let it go. Put your energy into what you need to be doing right now. Ah, picking up a knife is necessary right now. When our direction is clear and our mind is clear, then everything is just a tool. The five desires actually disappear. Right now in this moment, what is happening? How can I use what's available to connect intimately with this moment and respond with love and compassion? Those are my thoughts for the day. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. And if you want to share something about desire or thinking or feeling, when it appears, how do you relate to it and how do you use it? All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you very soon.